In this video, I'm going to use Softree's Terrain Module to read in a delivered survey from a DWG file. Here's the file. We can read DWG directly, also DXF, and there it is. I'm just going to take the defaults. I think most people do that when they're trying something for the first time. And there is my DWG file. It's read in a whole bunch of entities from the DWG model. And uh, let's make a surface. So I'm going to use our terrain modeling tool to generate a surface. I don't need contours right now. I've turned this on to indicate uh, what happens when the when all triangles are selected. Can't see much in the plan window. Let's go to 3D. Okay, two issues that I notice. First of all, I've got stray triangles going way outside my actual survey data. And secondly, what is all this stuff down at elevation zero? So let's delete the surface. And notice that the, uh, the data actually comes in two chunks. We've got three-dimensional data at some elevation up here, and then we've got a bunch of data down below at elevation zero. Okay, let's do that again. First, I'm going to select all the features at elevation zero and take them out of my model. It turns out that every single feature that comes from a DWG file by default is set to be elevation and modeled. And Terrain doesn't like to... Uh, well, Terrain uses elevation model features to make a surface. We don't want these zero elevation features in our surface. Let's change them. So select by name. No, select by range. And this will select all features less than one meter in elevation. Let's include the hidden ones. Okay, they're selected. You can see them highlighted in both views. And now I'm going to turn off that model checkbox and apply. And now rebuild my model. So I don't want those stray triangles going way off to the side. So I'm going to limit the length of my triangles. These cross sections are 20 meters apart. So if I go just under double that, um, I'm only gonna get data modeled into the surface uh, where points are close to each other. That makes more sense. Well, that looks much better. Now, let's uh, zoom in a little bit in the plan window here and take a look at all those labels. And you'll see there's a symbol there. And there's a label at, near the symbol, which is an elevation and a, looks like a, um, not clear what that point is actually, but this looks like an elevation. Uh, that looks like a description. And every one of those points is 3D and modeled, including the symbol itself. Symbol is at uh, layer zero. These others are at uh, let's see what they're called. That one's called points NO, point number, survey number. That one's points LF, elevation, and that one's points description. And those are actually being included in the model. If we looked closely at the surface, we'd see a little flat spot on that symbol, uh, including all these points here. Let's see if we can see that. You can actually see the triangles are connecting up the symbol and the label points. That's no good. I don't want that. So let's take those points out of the model. Now this is going to take a little bit of work. I need to select features by name and pick all the ones that 
represent these things. Okay, well there's the zeros, that's easy. I'll just use the advanced thing here and select anything called zero. Not sure what I had selected before, so I've deselected it. And there's all the zeros. Um, now the other one was called PNTS description, okay. P-N-T-S-D-E-S-C, select, that's added to the selection set, and now let's add um, point number, more, and finally E-L-E-V, even more points. Okay, there's 5,000 points there, they're selected, and I'm going to turn off that model checkbox again, apply, and recalculate the surface one more time. Okay, and if I display the triangles now, don't do this if you have a large model, it takes a long time in version 9. Triangle outlines, you can see that there's no longer any triangles connecting to the other points and you can see that in the model too if we just flip to 3D there's no extra points in here it looks sensible uh, we got some issues here that we can deal with later now I was all ready to uh, tell you that that's the right way to deal with DWG files and I got some advice from someone a little smarter than me and he said why are you importing all those symbols why don't you just skip them when you open the document and here's how you do that so let's start right from scratch I'm opening my DWG file and here are the options the symbols and the labels attached to the symbols are blocks turn off the blocks read in the data and first of all I don't get all those extra labels I do have a few labels here that are nice station labels and I don't get the symbols and I'm pretty much ready to go let's use the 3d window to look at the data before we even make a surface and aha now I need to get rid of those um, points again I'll just do that one more time and build our surface. Now I changed the import options and you might think that it would be wise to remember that for next time and in fact if you close the software it reminds you you've just modified the import export options. Do you wish to save changes? You say yes. It prompts to save something called an IOP file uh, import options parameters I think that's what it stands for and the one called normal is the one that you get by default so if I save that I will save those options so next time I open a DWG file the blocks will already be turned off now I'm gonna look at my surface which I think is pretty good and see if there's any other issues we have here and I can see a few issues around there. I'm not sure what that is. Um, right at the beginning here, it's really obvious. This is a, um, a nice trick to make it easier to move in 3D. Turn on track mouse in your 3D options. Uh, yeah, so you can see that probably this should be a smooth continuous line. What is that line? If I select it, it turns out to be a um, EPL, edge of pavement left, and then it's a classic brake line. If that were a brake line, I'd get a smoother surface there. Let's just quickly remake the surface and you can see now the surface tracks that brake line. Okay, there's other brake lines. For example, uh, this one here should also be a brake line. That's a TS toe of slope, I think. Uh, it's on the right-hand side. I'm not sure of right of what. But anyway, um, those should be brake lines. So I need to turn them 
all into break lines, turning on that checkbox and applying. So let's just do that. I'm going to select features by name again. That's the easiest way to select them. And you can see there's an EP edge of pavement. And I can select down to here like that. That's not good enough. I need to push this button here. When there's a checkbox, they're selected. Uh, there's some ditches. Those are break lines, so I'm going to select those. And I know for um, from looking at this file earlier that there are a bunch of shoulder features, SHL and SHR. Rather than search for them on this big list, I can just use the advanced symbol and say give me everything that begins with SH and add it to the selected list. So there's 14 there now. Now there's 18 and so on. I will continue selecting all of the break line features and then we'll change their properties. Now I have all the break lines selected. I can turn on this break line checkbox. Now some of the features I selected already break lines. So that's why we see that symbol in the break line check. Anyway, change it to check, click apply, and we're ready to rebuild the model. Okay, let's rebuild the model. Oops, we have crossing break lines. Well, it looks okay so far. Um, I don't know where the crossing brake line is, so let's go through the, the uh, procedure to find the crossing brake line. What we do is we uh, open the points window over here. It's that button there. And it has a property in it called X brake. If it's not there, you can add it from the options, add remove, and it's down under uh, point flags, X break. There it is. Okay, so that stands for crossing break line. And all we need to do is select the features that have a crossing break line in them and then sort. Um, we've already got the break line selected, so I could just sort and I should find them. There they are. Uh, but often you don't. And the way to select all the crossing break lines is to select by property choose crossing brake line and then update the points window by clicking on the eyeball. There we go. Those are the, the two features PO0 and PO1 that have crossing brake lines in them. Uh, there's not very many features so I don't really need to sort but if I do it puts them all at the top or the bottom. And there it is, it's, it's already showing me that. And if I had it off the screen and I didn't know where it was, just clicking on here scrolls the plan window, puts the current point next to the crossing brake line problem, and then just clicking on this next button here moves it to the other side. Right, so this is a brake line, this is a brake line, they cross. Now I think this feature, which is a ditch feature should have terminated here and not crossed the driveway. So I select the ditch feature, making sure this point is the current point, and then brake. There's a speed key for that, control Q. Do the same on the other side. and now this little segment has been isolated from the rest of the ditch. It is selected. If it wasn't, I could just click on it and delete. Now when I rebuild the model, I should no longer see crossing brake lines. There we go. Now it's, um, there's still some issues here. I think there should be a brake line through there. Uh, same here. That looks like that should be a brake line. I, I must have somehow missed that one. So I'm just going to apply brake line on there and 
recalculate. Yeah, if I missed all the SHRs, I can select them like so. And rebuild. So you can't do anything to individual triangles, but with break lines, you can tell the uh, triangle build operation to make it look a little different. What did I? Oh well, that's I guess that's as good as we're going to get. This feature probably should connect to that feature, and it doesn't look like it does. Uh, so sometimes it's a uh, uh, you reach a point of diminishing returns. It's too much work to make it perfect. Um, but here's one more little trick. That feature probably should have been connected to that point there. So I'm just going to go into edit mode, make sure this is my current feature, click to add a new point. I've got the mouse cap, I got the point captured with the mouse, and then snap it onto that point. It's picked up the elevation, uh, rebuild the model. Okay, that looks better. Uh, now, there, there are bound to be other issues like that. But I'm pretty happy with this surface the way it is. And we're going to leave it at that.